Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for the commemoration of Samuel Isaac Joseph Sherachevsky, bishop and missionary. Um, Sherachevsky was born in uh, Tarragon, Russian Lithuania. Um, in 1831, he appeared to be, have been named for his father. His mother was Rosa Salvatha. Orphaned as a young boy, it's speculated he was raised by a half-brother who was a timber merchant in good circumstance. Having shown himself to be a promising student, he was given the best education available, and it was his family's intention that he become a rabbi. From the time he left his brother's house at 15, he was obliged to support himself as a tutor and as a glazier. It was at the rabbinical school in uh, Zhitomer that he was given a copy of the New Testament in Hebrew, which had been produced by the London Society for Promoting Christianity Amongst the Jews. The study of that gradually convinced him that in Jesus the messianic prophecies of the Old Testament and the age-long hopes of his people had been fulfilled. At 19, he went to Germany where he studied for a year or more at Frankfurt, and for two years at the University of Breslau. To his fluency in Yiddish, Polish, and Russian, he added German, which he spoke like a native for the rest of his life. In 1854, he decided to emigrate to the United States. In New York City, he connected with uh, Christian Jews, but did not enter the Christian church until 1855, when he was baptized by immersion and as associated with a Baptist congregation. For reasons unknown, he then became a Presbyterian and went to Western Theological Seminary of the Presbyterian Church at Allegheny, Pennsylvania. Um, that's now Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. Um, after more than two years, he left to enter the Episcopal Church and the General Theological Seminary, where he found a mentor in the professor of Hebrew, Samuel H. Turner. His plan to complete his remaining two years of study was interrupted when he offered himself for work in China. In 1859, the Foreign Committee voted that he be appointed missionary to China as soon as he was ordained. He was ordained as a deacon in 1859 at St. George's Church in New York by Bishop William Jones Boone. Um, he arrived in Shanghai in December of 1859 on the ship Golden Rule with Bishop Boone. Um, in 1860, we, he was ordained to the priesthood in the Mission School Chapel, later known as Church of the Savior in Hongku. Um, he served in Peking from 1862, um, including on the Peking Translation Committee. By 1861, he'd begun his Bible translations into Chinese. The first was the Psalms into the Shanghai dialect. He later translated the Book of Common Prayer into Mandarin with English missionary John Shaw Burden. Um, he returned to the United States for health reasons in 1875, um, refused a call to become missionary bishop of Shanghai since Bishop Channing Moore Williams had requested division of his huge episcopate, which included both China and Japan. However, two years later, he accepted the call to that bishopric from the Episcopal House of Bishops. After receiving assurances of financial support for his dream of building a college to educate Chinese in Shanghai. He was consecrated bishop in Grace Church, New York in October of 1877. Two years later, founded St. John's College later renamed St. John's University. He served as Bishop of Shanghai until 1833 when he resigned for health reasons. Um, after having become increasingly incapacitated after having suffered a sunstroke in 1881. He returned to the US with the understanding that he could return to China as translator as his health permitted. He did that in 1895 Though he became paralyzed in every limb and with his powers of speech partially gone, sitting for nearly 25 years in the same chair, slowly and painfully typing out with two fingers his Mandarin translations of the Old Testament and 
easy Wenli translation of the whole Bible. His new translations of the New Testament and Hebrew Bible into Mandarin were published in 1898 and 1899. Um, he yearned to complete a new translation of the Bible into Wenli, Chinese classical language, finding the previous five attempts inaccurate and some even lapsing into paganism. He continued his translation work with the assistance of an amanuensis in Chinese and later Japanese. When he moved to Tokyo, Japan, during his final decade, a contemporary called him probably the greatest Bible translator China ever had. He died in October of 1906 and is buried in Tokyo. Um, St. John's University, um, which he began with 39 students, mostly taught in Chinese, in 1891, it changed to teaching in English, and the courses began to focus on science and natural philosophy. So that's Samuel Joseph, Samuel Isaac Joseph Sherachevsky. Let us prepare for worship. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our psalms appointed for today come from Psalm 119, starting with the section Aleph in verse 1. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong but always walk in his ways. You laid down your commandments so that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so discreet that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart. When I have learned your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. And Beth how shall a young man cleanse his way by keeping to your words? With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me, instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate upon your commandments and give my attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Gimel. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may see the wonder of your law. I am a stranger here on earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed at all times with longing for your judgments. You have rebuked the insolent. Cursed are they who stray from your commandments. Turn from me, turn from my shame and rebuke, for I have kept your decrees. Even though rulers sit and plot against me, I will meditate on your statutes, for your decrees are my delight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from Jonah, chapter 1, verse 17, to chapter 2, verse 10. 
But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head and the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you. Into your holy temple, those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out upon the land, dry land. Here ends the reading. This story is one of those that, to me, really re reminds us um, that the Bible is not specifically a history. It's a group of stories that, that are used to explain deeper truths. So whether or not Jonah was actually swallowed by, as we consider it, a whale, though it's a great fish, and then carried in that fish's stomach for three days and three nights and then coughed up onto dry land, whether or not that happened exactly like that really doesn't matter. Because that's not what it's about. What it's about is the overall picture here where Jonah um, Jonah doesn't want to do what God told him to do or called him to do and so he tries to flee to an area where God can't reach him and it's proven through this story to Jonah that that um, there is no place God can't reach him and in fact, when things look their absolute worst, where death is guaranteed, when Jonah gives up control and throws himself on God's mercy by telling the sailors to cast him into the sea, God takes care of him. God takes care of him when he's days out into the ocean. A way is found so that Jonah can actually do what God had called him to do, even though it looks pretty much impossible. A reading from Acts, chapter 27, verse, verses 9 to 26. Since much time had been lost, and sailing was now dangerous, because even the fast had already gone by, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I can see that the voyage will be with danger, and much heavy loss, not only for the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said, since the harbor was not suitable for spending the winter. The majority was in favor of putting to sea from there, and on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, where they could spend the winter. It was a harbor of Crete, facing southwest and northwest. When a moderate south wind began to blow, they thought they could achieve their purpose, so they weighed anchor and began to sail past Crete, close to the shore. But soon a violent wind, called the Northeaster, rushed down from Crete, since the ship was caught and could not be turned head-on into the wind, we gave way to it and were driven. But running under the lee of a small island called Cauda, 
we were scarcely able to get the ship's boat under control. After hoisting it up, they took measures to undergird the ship. Then feeling that they would run on the, on the Sirtis, they lowered the sea anchor and were, so were driven. We were being pounded by the storm so violently that on the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard, and on the third day, with their own hands, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest raged, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul then stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete, and thereby avoided this damage and loss. I urge you now to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For last night there stood by me an angel of the God, to whom I belong, and whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before the emperor, and indeed God has granted safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we will have to run aground on some island. Here ends the reading. It bothers me to hear Paul say, I told you so. <laughs> but this is once again about trusting God in situations where things appear hopeless. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. The Lord guided the righteous in right paths and showed him the kingdom of God. O God, who in your providence called Joseph Shwarachevsky to the ministry of this church, and gave him the gifts and the perseverance to translate the Holy Scriptures. Inspire us by his example of, and prayers to commit our talents to your service, confident that you uphold those who you call. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May God bless you, and I will see you online tomorrow.